This is for the WBA Light Flyweight Championship of the World. On the left, the champ, 14-0 with nine knockouts, Hiroto Kiyajuki taking on Axel Aragon Vega, who's 14-3-1 with eight KOs, just 20 years old. And yes, you see the height, four foot, 10 inches, and it's Kiyoguchi, who has a six inch reach advantage. And it's very rare that Kiyoguchi is this much taller. In fact, I'm guaranteeing you he's never been this much taller than an opponent. No, not at all. That's the advantage that a fighter like Vega has. He's been, I mean, he, his entire life, he spent fighting taller fighters, so he knows how to be explosive. He has quick hands, he knows how to jump in and out. He can be tricky and hard to time. Kiyaguchi has a really good offensive arsenal. One of his best shots, that left hook to the body, though. He's put a lot of opponents in trouble with that shot. By the way, back to that entrance song for Kiyaguchi. That was the song that Will Ferrell sang at the Catalina Wine Mixer. It's the Step Brothers, Dan Canibio, giving me that note. I knew it sounded familiar. Good uppercut by Kiyaguchi. Both these fighters have really sharp uppercuts in the inside. Good body shot, left hand, Kiyaguchi. Kiyaguchi has excellent technique, always has his hands up, coming forward with pressure, digs nicely to the body. to call Sergio El Mini for a completely different reason. <laughs> Big hands there. Kiyaguchi downstairs. See, this, this is what I meant by Vega. He likes to get in there. He has good uppercuts. When I was watching tape on him, and there's not many, there's not many fights on him, but it was the uppercuts that surprised me. Just like that. Fast hands, quick feet, dig down to the body. This is gonna be a good fight. Well, this is the range that Vega wants to be in, close quarters, because if it's a fight on the outside, he loses any advantage. But that's the thing. Sometimes when you're dealing with a fighter this small, you're not accustomed to keeping him off. So you, there's no sparring for this, and you're 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 in front of a tiny man that you don't you don't want to counter yet. I hated fighting shorter fighters, personally. Vegas saying those shots are below the belt. You saw him tapping on his waistband. He's going to put his head right in the chest of Kiyaguchi and just fire away. And it does it seem like Kiyaguchi is welcoming that. It's going to be a phone booth fight. And there's that uppercut I was talking about with Vega. Kiyaguchi coming off a one and a half year layoff. That's another thing. Maybe, maybe he needs to warm up oh, a little bit. Right hand from Axel Aragon Vega. Can you imagine if El Mini can win a world title? Four foot nine and a half inches tall. He'd be the shortest fighter in boxing history to have gold around his waist. And the first fighter born in the 2000s to be a champion as well. 20 years old, El Mini fighting El Grande today. You know, Todd, I, I fought fighters that were six foot five, and I fought a fighter that was five six, and believe it or not, I'd rather fight the guy that was six foot five. I hated fighting short fighters, and we're seeing a good case here because fighters like Vega, they they evolved to, to know how to fall, uh, to fight taller fighters. They know how to spring in at the right time. They have, and they're hard to time themselves. They have good counter punching abilities. Normally, to beat a, a fighter like this, Kyokuchi needs to make it. You know, slow down the pace with long jabs, just like he did the last round, and just like he's doing here. Fight behind the jab. Don't fight the smaller man's fight. Oh, 
trying to get around those gloves. Whoa, what just happened here? Maybe an arm injury. And that'll do it. They're stopping the fight. It looked like maybe a shoulder dislocation or something. I'm not sure, but El Mini in a lot of pain. Now, Vega landed that left hand, and something seemed to give way. It looked at first like it was the arm. I believe it's the right hand, and when it landed, he turned its back right away. I'm pretty sure that right hand's broken. No, no, be careful, careful. He broke it, I think. Just a brutal, brutal break for Vega, who was fighting an excellent fight, kept it close, gave himself a chance to win. What a disappointing anticlimactic finish to this fight. But it was, we've seen fighters break their hands before and it becomes more about what's going on, my hand hurts a little bit. But to see that kind of reaction is a bit odd. And it's kind of odd that they're cutting off the gauze. I would think that they want to leave the gauze until the end, but. Yeah, you're right, Todd, when a fighter, what I've seen, Sergio, correct me if I'm wrong, when a fighter breaks his hand, he feels it, he shakes it, and in the corner, you tell him, Give it a couple rounds, he'll thumb up a little bit. You keep going with that broken hand. Not so much this time. That was a bad one. And there it is. It was a punch on top of the head. That's what it was. You know, I thought it might have been the, the elbow or maybe a hip shot. But when you're punching that hard and it lands on top of the head, that's the worst place for a fighter to land a, a punch. Didn't look like yeah. it hit in an awkward way. I mean, he clipped him right on the temple. And he's lucky he didn't eat that right hand from Kiyaguchi. That would have been a career ender. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Raul Caiz Jr. calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 32 seconds of round number five. Your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated and still the light flyweight champion of the world. Gosokai Shimas Muhaino Sekai Oja Naniwano Maboy Hiroto Kyokushi. Not the way he wanted to do it, or not the way anyone would want to win it. Nevertheless, Kiyaguchi, a victorious performance in his United States debut.